Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Good evening and welcome to Plank of the Week, the one show where you don't have to judge anything at all because we do it all for you. It's instant justice here on Plank of the Week and we have got one heck of a team for you today. Uh, Jeremy Carl returns, very good to see you. Uh, Candice Holders is here, Russell Quirk is here and Rebecca Toomey joins us as well. So let's get straight to it. Um, the Labour Party, I figure, are going to make, they're going to be sort of in this for the long run, aren't they? I think I think I think it'd be fair to say the Labour Party quite possibly, and parts of it will be on every single week. Yeah. Wes Streeting, the health secretary, yes. surpassed himself this week, and I'm going to try very hard to to not use the wrong language. But basically, the way that he believes we should deal with an obesity epidemic, which is there is in this mm. country, there's a lot of people who are overweight. Uh, I, I go from the assumption that you weren't born big boned. It's because of what you've put in your gob. But apparently, Labour's idea is to give free weight loss jabs that cost £200 a month. So we're talking, what, uh, two and a half grand a year, £50 yeah. pound a week. Uh, we're going to give this to the feckless fat unemployed because that'll motivate them to go yes. to work. Now, And they'll all before, get jobs, yeah, right? Before everybody jumps up and down and says, uh, just, w w the people on the door, many of them are disabled and mentally ill. They are, but half of them aren't. And right. half of them are, I'm afraid, taking advantage of a system that allows them to sit and do nothing. I would rather say to them... Go out and give something in return for what we're giving you, the tax we're paying. Stop telling me that we need to import people to be hospital boarders. Get off your ass and do it. But to actually say, we've not, we're, we're living in a nanny state. Yeah. I mean, we're going to medicate yeah. you and, and, and that'll make you go... That doesn't make your brain want to get off no. your ass, does it? I don't no. understand it. How can an injection give you work ethic? Because no, that's no. what these people Great. are missing. Well, it depends, it depends what you're injecting. Of course, I suppose. <laughs> adrenaline. I'd like to distance myself. Pardon? <laughs> adrenaline. Yes, well, there again. Yeah. Um, but it's true, isn't it? I mean, what does it say about our society that we're now saying, do you know what? Um, you've made some bad decisions and um, you're finding yourself in a bit of a particular position, but I'll tell you what, we'll give you a free injection. Yeah. Taxpayers will also, pay for lazy people. Can I also just point out that, that nobody knows for sure what the long-term effects of these no. jabs are. No. They don't really know exactly how safe they are. But have a look at West Streeting telling everyone what a great idea it is on Sky. For those people that are so obese that diet, exercise doesn't feel like it's having much of an impact, it feels like you're on a losing battle, I think the drugs can make a really big impact in terms of getting uh, weight under control. The fact that exercise isn't having much of an impact is because they're not doing anything. Hang on, but why wouldn't it? I mean, exercise, by the way, it doesn't count just walking to the fridge. I, I know. <laughs> I have, to be, I have to be really, really careful because this could be career ending again. I've never seen anybody come out of a place where they've been kept for years. Yeah. That size! No. It's, it's what you put in yes. that results in how you look. Right. And but what the, you do when you're not eating. But these people that are disabled, inverted commas, often they're disabled because they're obese. Yeah. Right? So if they lost the weight, if they did put less into their mouths and they were to exercise, then they wouldn't be disabled. The problem is, of course, most of them want to be because they get the car on motability yeah. and they get yeah. the benefits and so on. So I'm afraid, you know, as ever, we're streeting as a member of this hapless government is barking up the wrong tree. But it's not going to motivate people, is Rebecca. it? Rebecca. Why, excuse my ignorance here, but how does someone weight actually affect the work? I'm saying if you do a physical yeah. job, you're going to be a tree yeah. surgeon. But if you're a certain size, we live in a very tech-savvy mm. world at the moment, lots of working from home, laptops, yeah. computers. I can't understand the correlation between being overweight and the inability to be able to yeah. do some exactly. form right, of work. Yeah. The NHS is in complete crisis, mm. yet we're using this drug that was used to treat diabetes, which is now being made famous with the Hollywood elite. Right. What we're going to see, I know what's going to happen. People are going to get these free drugs, become influencers, models, yeah. all these things. They're not actually going to give back right. to society. I don't understand why we can't be spending that money on educating so, people. We're scared to tell people yeah. because we're scared and we live in a world now and under a government that too scared to actually tell people the goddamn truth. And I tell you a very yeah, quick story. You can, but let me just say this about the NHS because right. one of the places where you find a lot of fat people are working in the NHS. I remember saying this last year when mm. they were on strike, the nurses. I said the only strike they should be on is a bleeding hunger strike uh, because they're that fat. <laughs> Many yeah. years ago, very quickly, take Go 30 on. seconds, I did a show in America and, and the first guest on this particular day was a very, very, very large woman. And she came out. I mean, it was like, it was quite, um, she was about the sky's dark and pounds. Yeah. Yeah. And she said, I, I, I've come here today, Mr. Kylie, which annoyed me because my name's Carl. And she said, I've come here today because I know you're a man of honesty and I'm not happy with the way I look. I thought, I'm not surprised. Were, were they she Irish? Said, can you, yeah. Person. She said, can you tell me, can you, can you tell me what I should do? And I remember distinctly saying, I've told right. Mike, do you want me to be honest or do you want me to lie? 
I said, oh, no, I want you to be honest. The audience <laughs> like that, you know. <laughs> I said, I'm thinking that the next time you decide to eat a big double pan pizza, you might try a frigging apple because it's gluttony. And honestly, the whole studio went like that's America. Nothing. And then 10 seconds later, she went, oh, my God, you're right, Mr. Carly. It's fruit for me. God bless you and God bless America. And we'll just say, oh, it's not rocket science. But, but to no, Becca's point, I guess, but it, no. to Becca's point, if they can pick up a remote control yeah. from their yeah. armchair yeah. or they can pick up a hot dog. And uh, they can then, pick up a phone and all well, some more from just well, these. Yeah, then they right? can pick up a phone to work or a keyboard mouse or, a, you know. Yeah. Or, or launch your own business, you know. This is a brilliant country in so many be, ways. Do we think it might be they just don't want to work? Could yes. be lazy. <laughs> Could be lazy, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it does, it goes back to that thing that we say all the time that it, I don't blame people for not working in this country because they get so many benefits that they're actually worse off if they get a job. Yeah, sure. They don't get their, their rent paid. They don't get, you know, their, their, their unemployment benefit. They don't get the free car, as you say. If you get a job and you're only making 26, 27,000, you're much worse off. So why would you? Well, especially yes. off the tax. Do you know how much yeah. you get for a dog? Hey? £17.50 a month to feed your dog as well. Do you? Yeah, no. absolutely. That's why you see beggars on the street. I've never seen that. Absolutely factual. Check it out. That's £4.75 ridiculous. a week. To I did not know dog. that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got something else for you. This is Julia Hartley Brewer and her view on this story. Julia, you sound very cheerful. I'm today. very, very you, cheerful. You celebrating hey. the NHS's 75th birthday. It, now, mm, given the NHS is neither a human being nor a pet dog, is it a birthday? Yeah. Well, sorry, darling, I can't hear you over all the clapping. Oh. Oh, it's wonderful. 7.4 million people on waiting Stop lists. It. Oh, it's Stop brilliant. It. 180 billion quid, 44% of I'm, our I'm government you, spending. I'm, I'm you... I don't think he's coming back again for a <laughs> yeah. while, is he? He's not on breakfast for no, a while, no, is he? Yeah. I'm not breakfast, sir. No, no, he doesn't, doesn't do breakfast anymore. doesn't do breakfast No, I do breakfast now. You do much. Uh, I'm doing it tomorrow, actually. Actually, right. no, I'm not, because this is going out Friday night. Oh. Um, let's move to Candice. You've got Keir Starmer. Oh, oh. yes, Keir Starmer. The one granny of my favourites. Well, this... So this... <laughs> So this story, I mean, this just infuriated me when I heard about it. So it was reported this week that apparently he has removed a portrait of Elizabeth I yes. and Walter Raleigh, yeah. two of the greatest Britons of all time. I mean, yeah. she was one there of our is. greatest monarchs, yeah. a fearsome redhead, so I admire her. Yes, of course. And Walter Raleigh, who basically defended this country from the Spanish Armada, yeah. which was the most the most fearsome military force of its time. Is it time. true, which is what I've heard, that he removed Sir Walter Raleigh because of the Spanish Armada, because it reminded him of his plea to smash the gangs and stop the boats? And old, uh, you know, um, <laughs> the, the Spanish Armada was like actually that. stopped in yeah. their tracks yeah. by Sir Walter Raleigh well, and the Navy. Be. Didn't he also take down Gladstone? He's taken down Thatcher. Yes, yeah. yes. And he said that he doesn't like people staring down at him. And I'm like, that's because you feel... In Inadequate, because these are some of the greatest people. You would think. Does that, that mean being... he only has missionary sex? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what I thought of that. With, with a blindfold yeah. on. Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like I, 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 I've just, I've just <laughs> jipped a bit. I've just <laughs> done so it. Maybe we've gone too far. Sorry. Um, Sorry. So is there any other way? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> So who has he replaced the pictures with? He's got like Trotsky, Lenin, yeah. Stalin. Chairman so, Mao. So it's it's Chairman it's a twentieth <laughs> Pol Pot. It's a twentieth up there. <laughs> it's a twentieth century artist. It's uh, a Portuguese artist. Yeah, some yeah. European thing, right? Yes, still someone yes. staring down at him, Candice. I know, that's the thing. Well, that's, so he's lying. Well, so yeah, but the thing is no one believes that. We all know that it's ideological. It's either yeah. because he hates Thatcher yeah. or doesn't like colonialism. Because right. Elizabeth and Walter Raleigh basically why, why we, spearheaded the age we, of exploration. We were talking about this this week and it's we seem to have got to a point in this country, don't know where you all think, that, that we seem to have to apologise for everything. I am sick yeah. and tired in just 14 weeks of thinking. Genuinely believe this. I think this government doesn't like Great Britain no. or anybody that's yeah. British. I think they do anything to stick the boot into right. a country I'm proud to also, be part of. Does he actually think, this is the trouble with these lefties, right? He actually thinks if you remove um, a portrait of Queen Elizabeth I, she doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah. Well, he hasn't wiped out history, has he? Well, no, he's, he's actually, people yeah. now talk about it even more. Yeah, maybe he's put a picture of Taylor Swift up because yeah, yeah. Uh, we found <laughs> yeah. out this week that he actually yeah. met Taylor Swift uh, after he'd already agreed, and the government had agreed, and the Attorney General and the police and Sue Gray and everybody had agreed that she could get a very fast escort by the police I back into town. Maybe, maybe he's yeah, removing so. pictures of anybody that might be a better leader than him, which would mean that there can't be any pictures <laughs> of anyone yeah. ever. They've all got to go. He'll have to go for the old abstract look, won't he? He'll have to get sort of the, the clee. Yeah. Uh, and all that sort of stuff. Bit or of maybe it's just multiple pictures of Waheed Ali. Yes. Across the wall. Yeah. <laughs> just, Would or like just, him gazing or, down at him? Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, multiple <laughs> <scared> <laughs> um, the, um, maybe, maybe multiple pictures of Waheed Ali's property. 
He's got mm-hmm. one of those. What? Property. Oh, property. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Does he need to get his eyes tested again? Does he need to go to Specsavers? Because the optics and a lot of things he does, I'm like, yeah. that's really stupid. Yeah. Right, he can't actually define what woman is, as far as I understand, yes. when he's asked what woman is. And then he takes down two pictures of two, whatever you think about Thatcher, phenomenal women for, for yeah. what women can achieve. Absolutely. Sorry to take them this way, but Elizabeth the first insane money. Could you not just add some extra pictures? Because the act of removing exactly what you said, Jeremy, it's like you're eroding history, you're eroding really I'm important of things yeah. as part of our history. Yes. And also, and by the way, our there, are, there are paintings, as far as I'm aware, these not are paintings is. that are owned by the nation. Yeah. And I say that, that prime ministers are a bit like football managers. You know, he's living in a property which we own, yes. which is run by, by Britain, looked after by us, paid mm. for by us. What the hell does he think he's doing, moving the pictures around? Yes. You know, leave the bloody I pictures where they are. Part, I think a lot of that, you, you're quite right about optics, they're appalling. You spend 40 minutes and think, what else can you do wrong? I think a lot of that, those sorts of things, like removing portrait, is, is lip service to the far left in his party. I think yeah. his problem, I said it before the election, his tent is so large, mm. to be fair, that he spends his entire time trying to play A, B, C, D. Yeah. And I, I, that's why I don't think there's any plan but, or anything. But, but who is it? I want him to be proud of being British. Of course. Yes. And, and why wouldn't you be, particularly as the Prime Minister? But but who's briefing this? Who's telling us that these pictures are coming down? Someone yeah. that's intent on causing trouble for him yeah. within his inner circle. But they that's keep very blaming, telling. Oh, it's the Conservatives, everything, with the money issue. Well, no, it was Sue Gray with the scapegoat. Well, that's the other gone. thing, right? But since Sue Gray left, Nothing's changed. No, They're still not. useless. The next right? hundred days They're will be still... the same as the last hundred. Do you know when we? Sorry, when who's, we... Who, sorry. who took over from from Sue Gray? Morgan McSweeney. Morgan McSweeney. <laughs> you weren't here last week. We, we imagine Morgan McSweeney and being like Game of Thrones. Well, one leg and a hook. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it does sound like. That. But here's the thing. Show me Morgan. This, the you, this gives you an insight into the inner workings of Downing Street, right? I was told this by uh, the Sun's political team. Um, the question was put to Downing Street at about eleven thirty um, on, I think it was Tuesday morning. Did Keir Starmer meet Taylor Swift? They finally got an answer out of them at 7.30 at night. Yeah. Eight hours later. Mm. It took them eight hours to work out what the answer was. Twice when you lie. Twice yeah. when you lie. And I said, no wonder they can't solve the problems in the Middle East. I mean, it takes them eight hours to answer a question about whether Keir Starmer went to see Claire and Taylor it, Swift and, backstage. And it does, oh. as a Briton, begin to make you think. You make a great point about the world stage. I, I just think we're going to be a laughing stock really soon, not yeah. just amongst our own people, mm. but in the wider world. Yeah, yes. exactly okay. right. Um, over to you. Just Talking of laughing stocks, yeah. um, my first nomination is Perpetual Plank Sadiq Khan. <laughs> and I will explain why. So, on the tube, Let's you see. may remember this two or three years ago, there are a number of things that were um, banned from yeah. tube advertising. You advertise. haven't come <laughs> with props again. I have. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Steady on. Don't eat it, it's raw. Um, so, hot dogs, because it was, it's fast food effectively, right. hot dogs have been banned by TFL and Sadiq Khan uh, from advertising. I don't remember the hot dogs. No, no, they have. They're, they're, a hot dog picture had to be taken down. It was some. Of the comedian. It was a comedian no, and he was promoting his tour and within the poster for the tour, for some reason, there was a hot dog. That had to be taken Dear down. God. Um, it was if, related to the name of the tour. Yeah, if you remember as well, there's another. I'm told he had to replace it with a cucumber. Is That's that right? it. Yeah. Um, Cake, Inside you remember, remember the wedding cake? There was yes, a, there I remember the wedding, the wedding cake. cake. So cakes, cakes are That was a play, wasn't it? Two. That they had like a yeah. play. Is that yeah. It is. I want to do oh, that. there we go, yeah. yeah okay. That's the one that was banned, yeah. There Only in Tina's wedding. So fast food, sugars, anything fatty, yeah. all banned. So you Did won't see those. Not, not the also, unemployed, though. They're, 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 no, no, they're, 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 they're not. As long as they've had an injection. I hope you haven't brought a bikini, but I think they also banned bikinis. Did they not? Because there was a picture of a woman in a bikini. Get your summer body ready or something like that. That was banned So you won't see any of these adverts now on any tier property, so buses, tubes, tube right. stations, etc. However, the thing that hasn't been banned by <laughs> Sadiq Khan is, just is a it. hate preacher. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. Um, so oh, this is, is um, Ishmael bin Musa Menk, who is also is. known as Mufti Menk. Um, that's Mufti. his advert Mufti there. Menk. Mufti Menk. Is there's an, on the left there's another right? advert, by the right. way, which is of him. There it is, burning dollars, which, by the way, is a criminal offence in the United States, yeah. I'll just add. Um, so this is a man that has been banned from Singapore, banned from Denmark for saying such things as, for instance, gays are worthless, gays are filthy, right. uh, and so on. So he and now he's on the northern line. Yeah, now he's on the northern line. So, really? and, and Sadiq Khan, apparently, in a response <laughs> to a question from Susan Hall uh, on the Assembly, the London Assembly, uh, he said, yeah, I'll, I'll look into this. And TFL have replied and said, no, he's not looking into it. Uh, it's all fine, apparently. Hate preachers on the Tube Network, on adverts, on posters. Unbelievable. All good, but not hot dogs. Where did you get and that story from? Cake. That is insane. Have I won? That's brilliant. Have I, won? I think he's won with that. I think <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, it is I mean, that's awful, isn't it? Isn't it, Joe? Yep. That's that. What does that yep. say? But this is what I mean. You know, you get these kind of nanny state type political leaders and they want to police everything mm-hmm. except for some things. So yep. you don't want to police the things that everybody else yeah. knows are important. So, 
And I wonder sometimes if he's doing this deliberately just to wind everybody up. I don't think he's that intelligent. No? M- M- Mufti Menk, he also said one other thing, can Mufti Sorry. Menk. Mufti Menk. He's Has he got said, any um, merchandise, Mufti gay, Menk? Gay people are worse than animals. What? Dear God, how is that in any way allowed? I don't understand how this is slipped through the net. So we can't well. advertise yeah. wedding cake, but we can have a man who believes that you should talk about homosexuals like that. Mm. Unbelievable. But they yeah. defended the advert as well. They said, you know, it doesn't, oh, go against, it doesn't go against the policy, yet God forbid you might want a piece of cake or exactly. the McDonald's that are at literally every tube station mm. across London. I, I, have to, I have to say this. I've said it to Mikey before privately. Uh, London should be ashamed of itself. I know he only got a million votes out of 12 and certainly other people should have said, no, how a cock stood up. It's unbelievable. How can anybody want that to represent you? But not just that it's been allowed to happen, but now that they're defending it on the basis that it's yeah. OK. So they've investigated, they've been asked a question in a, you know, political uh, can assembly. Can I have a bit of cake? You can. Um, and um, it is literally fresh. I baked it myself this morning. Oh, do it. Don't worry. And this is, do you want the raw hot cake? I no, I'm, 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 right. I wouldn't trust that cake. <laughs> 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 really? It could nice. have been laced with something. Thanks. Hang on. What are you trying to say? Well, it might have been. I mean, <laughs> has it been in your possession the whole time? Yes. <laughs> really? I bought it from Sainsbury's on the way here. Did you? No, I'm not eating it. It's from Sainsbury's. I thought it was M&S. Well, I'm just trying to get some sponsorship. Hey, Sainsbury's. Yeah. Come on, more cake, please. And we'll have some money as well. Thanks. Goodness gracious me. Maybe the hate preacher would like some. <laughs> um, Rebecca, over to you. Another popular choice. Well, this is uh, a part of the NHS. This is the Gloucestershire Hospitals Trust. Now, okay. the hardworking, struggling NHS, what should we do with that tiny amount of money they've got? Mm. Should we help sick people, you know, employ more GPs, get more people in front of GPs? No, let's create a booklet. Let's do a 28 page booklet. <laughs> on how our staff should behave and what they should say. Oh, yeah. Now, Very important. one of these things was don't say phrases such as the blind leading the blind, <laughs> deaf for no reason, because... Well, they're it, banned now, is it? Well, they've been advised not to use it because <laughs> it would offend people who have, you know, lost their sight or are partially sighted. No, no, let's make a, you know, a, a real point here. How about preventing sight loss? How about right. spending those resources, that time, yeah. on preventing sight loss or helping those people, right? Instead, let's tell them how they're going to be offended. This is what really winds me up. Why is all these bodies saying to people, you need to be offended, this is how you don't offend? Yeah. Why you don't need you ask to be, them? It's so clever what you've just said. There's it's almost this belief now that you need to be offended yeah. about bloody anything, yeah. right? Yeah. right. Mm. But why on Very earth true. would anybody in their right mind say something like to a blind person, it's like the blind leading the blind. You wouldn't, would you? No. You just wouldn't say it. No, but wouldn't a blind person acknowledge that it's not a good idea for the blind to lead the blind? Well, you would think so. Say. I got a complaint. Well, if, I mean, also, it's a pretty good chance, by the way, if you're in a, a blind unit in hospital, there might be somebody blind leading somebody else blind down the corridor. I got a complaint this week, but talking about the jabs thing and fat people, I yeah. didn't get a complaint for saying somebody was fat. I genuinely said that we need to discuss it. This is a massive subject. Yeah. I literally didn't mean anything. Oh, it's offensive to say massive. Really? Yes. This is what we're, yeah. we're, people are expecting to be offended. I love it. I think we should all go Ricky Gervais. Yeah, absolutely but, right. But it's a culture of fragility, and I just don't know what has happened to the left. Mm. The left used to be the warriors for yeah, free yeah, speech, yeah. and now they just want to constrict speech. They used to be manning the barricades, yes. didn't they? Sort of fighting for their freedoms to get away from the horrible, you know, feudal landlords that had ruined their lives. It's like we've switched sides, and the right used to want to ban things. Yeah. They were really, yeah, like, right mimsy ish about everything. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But this, of course, is from the same organisation that wants to ask everybody if they're possibly pregnant, men and women, isn't yeah. it? I mean, there's no words for this, is there? Yeah, there's and, no and words. How does, how does anybody take that seriously? So 28, to a bloke, 28. you up the duff? How does that work, then? How does that happen? I don't understand. I don't, I, I'll honestly... I'll draw your diagram. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm talking about a bloke. How does a bloke can't be no. bleeding pregnant? And no. can I, just, I think Jeremy knows how to have kids. Yeah, saying. although... Oh, right, famously, okay. famously, <laughs> famously, famously, David Lammy did say in an interview oh. that he knew that it was possible because he'd learned and studied about it uh, for a man to grow a cervix. He actually said that. Yes. Out a loud. man can grow a yeah. cervix. Honestly, yeah. that's our foreign secretary. Can I say <laughs> the word I want to? What a load of bollocks. You can true. cut that out. It's, right. I mean, on it, not a load of bollocks. I just, honestly, it's ridiculous. It's worse than concrete, that, isn't it? I mean, you know. <laughs> well, that's why the show exists. Concrete. Yes. Isn't it? This is why it is unbelievable. Isn't it brilliant? Um, oh. uh, we didn't have, uh, you haven't got any other words to throw in that you know that they want us not to say, do you? The blind leader. I mean, just or... saying hello now is going to offend someone. Oh, yeah. Someone. Apparently, saying hello, this came out today. If you say, if you don't say, hello, it could be in breach of the law because there was an employment <laughs> tribunal of a woman uh, who came in and had a very grumpy boss and the grumpy boss um, 
didn't used to talk to her or acknowledge her existence because he was grumpy. She got fired later in, at some point or other, and she one of her uh, stories was to the tribunal that he never used to say hello to well, her. Well, we're going to be sued, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, I just... But you can't just say hello to someone. If someone does that to me, I'm always like, hi. Yeah, but hang on. Yeah. The other week, we were told not to say hello to strangers because it might be considered to be an act of microaggression. Which is a bit like Micro what? Aggression. Aggression. Micro By saying hello? Yeah. Yes. Well, it it is really mm -hmm. impossible to believe that I am turning into my father on television. But you see the <laughs> tube now. There are signs that tell you you can't look at anyone. But yeah. you cannot... <laughs> you can't stare at anybody on the tube. That's an offence. It is. Apparently. But it's yeah. not yeah, for, yeah, it's but, not for a terrorist. Very, but it's not no, for a hate preacher. You can look at... Yeah, you can't call him a terrorist, but you can call him a hate preacher. You have to look at him. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Alan, be praised. Now, coming up... The World Conquer Championships is a thing, you know. Um, and I'm going to be talking about that. Also, a bit of slavery, um, as um, it was referred to the other day as old school slavery by Kevin O'Sullivan, well, as I, opposed I, to I, new school slavery. It's Barbados, isn't it? It is. We'll come back. You know a bit about that. We'll come back uh, after this with more from Bank. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. I'm Mike Graham, and we are here, of course, for your delectation. Um, I didn't know that the World Conquer Championships was really a thing, I must say. I mean, we used to write about conquers when I was younger in newspapers, and there used to be, you know, always every season there would be some cheating scandal. But I thought, to be honest, it's 2024, and it must be a thing of the past, surely. Well, I, I feel able to talk about this, <laughs> because a man has been competing for 47 years. Yeah. He's never won anything. And, uh, he's, he's not very good at it. No. <laughs> and suddenly everybody was saying, God, he's doing really well this year, because every time he whacks his conquer, everybody else's conquer split. Now, oh. I don't expect laughter here, ladies, because it's very serious, but I am the only person in the studio today with a metal conquer, because I, of course, have a titanium bollock. Have you? <laughs> Yes. Oh, I just thought you only um, had one. Well, no, no, no I had a fake one. That's on a bionic fake one. Bollock. I've got a, a titanium £279.99 wow. testicle because I had testicular cancer. So I can sort of understand... Why are you rubbing yourself <laughs> like that? Because <laughs> at what point does it hurt? At what point do you have to replace it? Or well, it's you... supposed to be 20 years, but the problem I had at the beginning, I don't know where the camera is, I, I, at the beginning this I would walk a bit stuff. like that. Oh. No, no, it's true. I was, was on it that size? Organ. It was bigger, <laughs> and so I lent. So then they, they had to... Anyway, no, I not... knew a guy who swelled, <laughs> swelled up, actually. Really? And, you know, he could, could barely walk Well, I, I used to go to... Hang on, uh, isn't that uh, a story? Isn't that Fibar Saunders? <laughs> <laughs> And it's unfeasibly large. I used to go through airport things and it would go beep, beep, which is really embarrassing. It's hard to explain that. I could have basically taken my metal conquer out of my wherever. And put it on a string. Put it on a string and beat David Jenkins, because mine's titanium. His name is David Jenkins. He's 82 years old, right? And he was victorious for the first time. Uh, in the World Conquer Championship. Surprise! Since 1977. It's like trying. being in a water pistol fight yeah. with a Kalashnikov. Absolutely he's right. Yeah. Isn't he? <laughs> he's known, I don't know why he's known as this name, but he's known as King Conquer, right? Mm. I don't know why, because he's never won anything. No. So anyway, let's have a look. We've got a clip. Brilliant. The world of Conquers has gone bonkers, with allegations of cheating at the highest level. The controversy is focused on this man, King Conquer, also known as 82-year-old David Jenkins. He's accused of using a conquer made of steel, and obliterating his opponent's nuts with one hit. <laughs> I mean, it's just one of those stupid stories that could only happen in Britain. Couldn't yeah. I mean, you couldn't have this. But that journalist else. knew exactly what he was saying. His opponent <laughs> in the final uh, yeah. of the Conquer Championships, World Con, was a man by the name of Alistair Johnson Ferguson. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't course. the done thing I got done no. by an unbelievable man with a metal. And he went to the trouble of uh, getting the fake steel Conquer. This is all allegedly because he denies it, right? Yeah. And painting it brown so that it looked like a real Conquer. Let me check these things. I mean, when I was a kid, right, they used to dip the conkers in vinegar, vinegar to make them hard, them. right? I was never really good at it. I don't know if you were, but, I mean, I hated conkers. I mean, I used to like collecting them from the trees and stuff. But we've got another um, uh, clip, I think, here of the alleged cheating. This is the phone footage the committee has been examining. Mr Jenkins in the green appears to put one conker in his pocket, then takes out another from a different pocket and throws it into the crowd. Could the one still in his pocket be made of steel? I mean, I can't the one in my pocket is definitely made yeah. of steel. To be fair, steel I mean, this is a national in your scandal. Pocket. I can't believe they've done so much work yeah, on this story. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's it's probably cost the license payer about a hundred grand yeah. to tell that particular story. This but is so British. It's so brilliant. A conquer sport, and it's not been sort of taken over by the trans movement. There's no like other uh, agenda. Be. But be it's something. just something that 
it's a co- like it's just part of our culture. It's a bit and, of a cheese roll. But what's really yeah, it's exactly, oh, yes. just like, and they've raised yeah. four hundred thousand as a charity. It's a charity event. They've they've raised four hundred thousand over four hundred thousand over the years for charity. Right. So actually, I don't care if you cheat. They're raised my charity. You know, it, I just think it's such a brilliant thing. <laughs> I, 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 I think the man with story. the double barred neck thinks it's a bit of a yes. do. I'm not <laughs> having a little thing. <laughs> he's he's a bit man. rum. I think yeah. he's, uh, he's been saying. But we've got the chairman of the organising committee. Uh, says that he thinks the steel conquer was indistinguishable from a real one, uh, and the only giveaway was its weight. Uh, his name is um, Sinjin Burkitt. Yeah, I bet right? he does. Sinjin Burkitt. He says there's been an investigation. <laughs> uh, it suggested no foul play. Uh, Mr. Jenkins himself has called the cheating claims a load of nonsense. Hmm. Right. I knew the stakes were so high in Conkers. I know. Do you have Conkers in South Africa? No. <laughs> no. I thought she was from Australia. No, I'm English. I just lived in South Africa for 11 years. No. Yeah. There, there you go. go. With no Conkers. <laughs> Conker free. Conker free. Uh, right, Jeremy, over to you for some slavery action. Uh, this was uh, announced earlier in the week. Um, David Lammy. Oh, oh. God. Jesus. Uh, Mia Motley. And I, I listen, it's, it's not a secret. I had a house in Barbados, which I sold. So they've had my reparations. But Barbados uh, is under socialist rule. Uh, Prime Minister's a lady called Mia Motley. It's 38 constituencies in Barbados. Did in she the last election, crew? she won the inter Motley <laughs> crew. You're brilliant. I get Sorry. it. I get she, it. Like um, she, ha- she won every seat. So she completely controls yeah. Barbados. Um, she's decided. Uh, and I would respectfully suggest the timing is quite interesting, uh, that uh, £200 billion is what we owe uh, to Barbados, yes. irrespective of the rest of the Caribbean. Now, people who watch this will have one opinion, others might have another one. I don't think we should give them a penny. No. I'd like to say, if you're going to start going back that far, are the Romans going to give us yeah. money for what the they... The Vikings. Did? It, always seems, yeah. it yeah. always seems to be great bloody Britain. But I would suspect that Mia Motley and all of her Motley crew in yeah, the Caribbean... Are going to come out the woodwork now. Why? Because our stupid foreign secretary has just given away the Chagos Islands, which I think probably sends a message to the whole world, which is yeah. you can have a bit of Britain for free. Of course, exactly. Dip right. in. They've got no, they don't spend it on their pensions. You can have a couple of hundred and it's million. Worse, it's worse than that because Lammy's actually in support of the, 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 the whole oh. idea of reparations. This is what he said He's in 2018. Oh, look. I'm afraid, as Caribbean people, we are not going to forget our history. We don't just want to hear an apology. We want reparation. He, no, he's actually his parents are from Ghana, nowhere right. near the Caribbean. I mean, I suppose you could. <laughs> is it Guyana, isn't it? Guyana, yeah. Guyana, which I suppose you could argue is no, on it the is in the West Indies. Guyana, it's in the Guy- Caribbean Sea. Um, it's not a Caribbean he's island. He's changed now. He's the foreign secretary. Yeah. Isn't he? I, I, for me, I mean, I don't know what anybody else in the panel thinks. I, I, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. Apologists, we have to. We're not allowed portraits. We're not allowed to be proud of, uh, you know, Churchill. We're not allowed to mm. any monarchs. Thatcher. We've got to give reparations. Look, the British Empire did what a lot of a lot of other empires did. It did some good and some bad. Yeah. That's a fact. Well, of it life. also I'm sick actually of to we actually the whole did time. abolish slavery. Yeah, actually. yeah, but that's quite relevant. That's well, quite relevant. And, yeah. we, and we paid slave owners, and we spent a fortune on the Royal Navy to try and I stop slavery. It's, it's yeah. the latest the thing for people We've to jump on. Well, I mean, the reparations people say that it's, it's the paying the slave owners was the problem because by giving them money, you basically created this whole raft of people who are very wealthy. Uh, off the back of people who, who it stopped it. They can't uh, go both ways. Well, they can't be both. It's also it's impossible to know who's supposed to benefit. Mm. You know, I actually did this the other day on my show, um, and Rafe Heidelman Koo, who knows a lot about the history of colonisation of the world, said actually, uh, if you'd stayed in West Africa and not been taken to the West Indies, you'd be a lot worse off today um, than if you were living in America, where a lot of people ended up. Just to say one thing, because um, I spent ten years in Barbados and lived there for a while. Um, it was said by quite a few people this week that, that it's ironic given Chinese links. I'm telling you categorically, it's 10 times more expensive to, to live or go on holiday in Barbados. They're losing the tourist industry and all the property and all the businesses are being taken over by the Chinese. That's an absolute right. fact. I mean, they, I, I was speaking to my father-in-law the other day. That was from 10 years ago. Mm. So I, I think there's suspicion about the Chinese links and there's suspicion about the Chagos Islands. But for me, stop bloody apologising. Come on. How are they going to spend that money as well if, right. if, if we were to, to give yeah. that money? Where are we getting it, it from? It, it, skin. Yeah, firstly, where are we getting it from? But secondly, how are they spent? If they gave us a plan and said, this is what we're going to do right. to help our citizens, you might start to think, oh, well, maybe there's something we could work yeah, on. Neil Motley's and got it wrong, because what helps her citizens, the great thing about Barbados is Bayesian people, and Bayesian people would tell you that the number one, the number one thing that they love and they can rely on is the tourism industry. Yeah. But the British tourism industry is going down the toilet because of the cost. Yeah. But if, they, if you take the money, just say, from the UK, which don't have much anymore, who really suffers in the UK? Which demographics who rely on central yeah. services the most and, you know, all of these things, who's really going to suffer as well? 
So are you just, it's just a problem where you're just going to create more suffering. Yeah, but, but, but how can you possibly countenance that people that were born in 1940, 50, 60 in this country somehow are responsible for things that happened two or three hundred years ago to people that are two or three generations back from those that are now claiming yeah. reparations it, now? It's nonsense. It was an elite thing anyway. I mean, the vast majority of people did not own slaves. I right. mean, they didn't even have the vote. Right. I mean, it was a very, very small number of people that had these huge landed right. estates. And you're talking about people whose ancestors would, might have been dirt poor, yeah. trying to eke out an existence. And if, and if those people, for example, want to repay some money, because I know there were a couple of families, there was that stupid Trevelyan woman, wasn't there? She worked for the BBC, and she went and gave £100,000 to some people in Trinidad. Trevelyan. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. And I thought, how embarrassing is that? And how kind of, you know, patronising that you're going to go, oh, we're terribly sorry that we, kind of, you know, ruined your ancestors' lives. Here's £100,000. Would you go away now? The first slave traders in the world were black African slave yeah. traders. Uh -huh. And there was plenty of slaves in the Roman Empire. There were plenty yeah, of slaves were. Um, in, you know, the, the Persian Empire, mm -hmm. the Chinese Empire. Any you know. chance to and also, by the way, there's, there's by the in way, Pakistan people now. say there aren't slaves now, but there still are slaves. You know, if you go to the Middle East yeah. um, and you check out who happens to be doing all the uh, uh, all the grubby work in in Saudi Arabia, it's a lot of Filipino mm. slaves. And who's mm -hmm. building all the buildings yeah. in Dubai? It's a lot of Bangladeshi and Pakistan who are treated have a big problem about as badly as as you can find. You know, yeah. ridiculous. Anyway, uh, over to you, Candice. You're back with the um, higher education sector. Yes, yes. So this was quite a big story this week. Suella Braverman was due to give a speech at her old university, oh. Cambridge mm. University, at the Conservative Association. And a bunch of pro-Palestine demonstrators said, no, we're going to protest the event. So she was advised that it was too much of a security risk, it was too costly, and they cancelled the event. The event. And what she said, and I agree with her, and I think lots of people have said this, is this is why we need the Higher Education Act that Bridget Phillipson, the Education Secretary, suspended. Yeah. Because there is such a problem on campus now with free speech. And one of the excuses that is used to shut down events is that the security is too costly. Yes. And under this act, you, they can't do that. They have to cultivate an atmosphere of free speech. It, it, it's ridiculous that we've come to this point. Like, it used to be that we had a culture where you didn't have to explicitly legislate for things, but we have to now because there's so many extremists on campus. And I just find it absurd that an elected MP cannot give a speech at her old university. And then you look this week at those police officers who were filmed at the Virgil for the... Um, oh, yes, for, ha for, ha for Nasra, Hezbollah. The Hezbollah. Yeah. There yeah. was a vir Virgin in London where people were waving flags saying he was a wonderful man. He was a terrorist scumbag murderer. Nasra, and yeah. when a bloke walked past and said, do you think this is appropriate? The police said, well, that's your opinion, Hezbollah, a terrorist yeah. group. So we'll, we'll stop Suella Bra I might not agree yes. with everything, Suella right. Braverman. If you live in a democracy, everybody should be able to do yes. what they want to do within the confines of the law, I would have thought. Yes. But the but, very but, worrying but, thing, of course, is over the next 10, 20, 30 years, the people that are at university now, that you would want to be informed and rounded in terms of their opinions are being stopped because of a minority of extremists that don't want them to hear, don't want them to hear an opinion that they don't agree Absolutely. with. Yes. Um, this, this that is dangerous. The group who actually wanted to stop this are not, a, my understanding is they're not a university society. They're, they're affiliated in some capacity, but it's not even student run. And the thing is, like, the, you know, the loudest it's voice... Infiltration, it, it, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's, heard, it's heard first. Universities are supposed to be the place of debate, yeah, of exactly. question. Yeah. yeah, critical thinking. And it's it's terrifying, actually, that you're not, you know, the freedom, you're not allowed to even just debate. If you don't like what she's saying, sit there and listen and yes. question. Yes. And this is one of the best universities in the world. No. And what, they haven't got the intelligence to question? Right. No. Exactly right. And the problem is, is that, that this has been used before. I mean, this is just the latest example of an organisation. It happened, I think, to Graham Linehan, didn't it, when he yes. went up to Edinburgh to go to the Edinburgh Festival. Uh, and basically all these people rang the, the venue and said, we're going to come and make an absolute, you know, horror show of this whole thing. And so they said, I'm sorry, we can't put the show on anymore. And he ended up doing it outside the Scottish Parliament, I think, in the open air. Yes. Because venues will, will get the jitters because they don't want this publicity. I know, I know. You know, people often say, like, our constitution, we've never needed to have laws around free speech, not like in the US, for right. instance, where you have your First Amendment protections. But I just think it is, start, it is looking like with woke culture, which has absolutely no respect for free expression whatsoever, they're going to run right over yeah. you. So you've actually got to have the law. Mm. Feelings, not facts. Yes. yes. Yeah. Very yeah. definition of wokeism. Yes. Exactly right. Yes. It's absolutely ridiculous that, that that's the kind of place. The, the, but universities have become this kind of ludicrous centre for all of this kind of you know dictator like behaviour. My daughter's at Edinburgh University, yeah. and 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 uh, she's she's reasonable, but you can see it. You just by talking to her already, they're told one thing. It's what, a bit like going being, a bit woke. It's a bit. When, 
it's a bit like going into a trade union. I mean, Thatcher came in and she cancelled the closed shop and said, you can strike if you vote privately and you decide. Everybody just went with it because they were terrified of the shop students. Yes. I think there are yes. students being dragged. I think it's, I think there's herd like, I think that's like a lot of people who question their sexuality. I think, honestly, I think there's a, a feeling that you have to go with the flow and it gathers strength. Mm. It's appalling. Well, most people don't really have the, the, the ability or the cojones to stand up to the crowd. No. Nope. Because it's too difficult. And you know they and that's worry that, it, that it, yeah, it's understandable. Yeah. It's, they worry that it's going to hurt their career or it's going to hurt their you know, standing in, in the community. Or what you need them. to do is to get cancelled, yeah. and then you don't give a toss. Exactly right. Yeah. Very, very true. Um, are we taking another break? I think we are. Um, coming up, uh, we're going to talk about some more members of the cabinet. Funnily enough, I think that's the fourth one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and a building society doesn't like Robin Hood. Unbelievable. Uh, Robin yeah. from the rich giving to the poor. Apparently, it's not a good thing. Um, this is Plank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. It's time for Mr. Russell Quirt. I don't know if you've got any props for this one. No, no, I haven't. I should have bought a pink wig. A pink, yeah. wig, or pink, a pink wig or a blue wig yes. or something. Because my second nomination is Louise Haig, yes. MP, who is the Transport Secretary for some inexplicable reason, uh, but she is. Um, and she almost single-handedly scuppered Keir Starmer's very precious International Investment Summit. Uh, this is her getting on. her hair done, apparently. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. It's about 11, doesn't she? That looks yeah. creepy, isn't well, it? And yeah. she acts about 11, Jeremy, I have to say, because what she said not three or four days before that summit, which, of course, now since then has been applauded by Keir Starmer and the government as having raised £64 billion well, pounds for Britain, which it didn't, because, of course, much of that was started yeah. during the previous government's tenure. But anyway, um, she decides to go to war with P&O Ferries. So P&O Ferries, who, you know, you could argue have a slightly questionable approach to how they deal with their staff yes. two or three years ago. I think they sacked a load of people. They all of them. And then yeah, so not, very nice wasn't other great. not very nice. So, yeah. you know, she was Technically, saying, you could have a problem, but keep it private. So she's, she's kind of got a point. However, what you don't do as a member of the government, a government spokesperson, an MP for the government, is three or four days before that very, very important summit. But don't forget the Keir Starmer government is all about growth and wealth and, you know, and so on. She decides to say, p Ferries are a terrible company and you as the public should boycott p and P&O Ferries. Now, the problem is p and Ferries is owned by... DP World. Yes. DP World had packed their bags yeah. and were literally on their way, way over with a suitcase full of about a billion quid to come and invest in Britain. Uh, and, of course, as soon as they heard Louise Haig, a spokesperson for the government, say, your company is a bad company, they unpacked and said, OK, well, sod you. We just won't come over anymore. Yeah. So cue then Downing Street staffers on Saturday and Sunday last week, desperately ringing DP World, lobbying and trying to make sure that they came back to the table. So not only was it pretty moronic of Louise Hay to scupper, or potentially scupper that particular uh, event, but my question also is, I wonder what it cost us. So you can imagine, can't you, that DP World, being right. pretty bright and smart, would have said, well, OK, we'll come back, this is pretty bad for you, but... What's in it for us? What's in it for us? Well, I've been asking this question all week because you know that they would have got some kind of sweetener. Um, Millions. It could be any kind of... I mean, it could be anything you like. It could be we won't charge any corporation tax yeah, for 20 years is. or something like that. So she is single and we won't cost taxpayer a fortune. Yeah, exactly right. And then the most bizarre thing was that she, um, having said all that, um, had, then was told by Keir Starmer and by various other people that came out uh, that she wasn't speaking for the government. She's literally a member of the government. So, right? you'd sack her, wouldn't you? Well, well, except for this. They, they signed off on what she said. She basically called them rogue operators. Downing Street approved it. Wow. It goes out. Which, so more duplicity Can't blame from, Sue Gray anymore. No, more duplicity from Downing Street, who say, oh, she doesn't speak for the government. Well, why did you sign it off then? And then also, just to prove how completely incompetent and moronic this woman is, of course, a, a matter of hours later, it sent me straight through the roof, she announced that train guards, mm. if they do a five-day week, get yes. a £300 bonus. Yeah. I've only got one thing to say. So you're taking 300 quid away from pensioners and you're giving it to your union pay masters. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah. Right. We well, know where their get priorities are. It's a day's are. work as opposed to for the whole winter. I'm thinking yeah. of doing more than three days a week. Now. I'm going to be a train guard to get 300 quid. And 300 I've quid actually been on a PO cruise um, because I have, and I totally take your point about how they treated staff previously, but this is where the Labour government are like, we're all for the people and, and everything else. Maybe I should go on a P&O cruise because actually they're very affordable. It's about £600 for the whole week. Right. Everything good. When I was there, you, if you want to add all on... All inclusive. An, essentially, yes, but That's if you right. want are to... Are you sponsored by P&O? <laughs> no, because I really think it's important <laughs> when, when families are hard up and they want to go on holiday and it's if, if 
you know, companies are paying tax in this country and people want to go on holiday in an affordable way. Why are we always criticising? And like I say, the staff are exceptional on their cruise ship. They cannot do more for you. Most people uh, that I know would assume that if you go on a cruise, you're slightly older, this isn't you, and you eat a lot. Yeah. So why don't we go the full bloody hog and all those fat, lazy people yeah. who are getting a jab, <laughs> why don't we just send them on an all-inclusive P&O ferry well, where they can eat themselves what? to the end and of their life? For have them sailing around the planet. I thought, I thought, I thought you were going to say you could get, give them the jabs while they're on it and then when they come off at the end, they're thin again. <laughs> no. It, no? Uh, do you know, that's brilliant, isn't it? Well, they Honestly. could do that. Well, oh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, listen, we've got a bit of... How is Louise. she a cabinet minister? We've got a little bit of Louise Haig um, talking about how she's fixing the trains in Britain. When I became Transport Secretary, I said we'd move fast and fix things. And that's exactly what we're doing. The previous government deliberately provoked and prolonged these strikes and hurt passengers and the economy. In direct contrast, this Labour government will always put passengers first. That oh, yeah? is not true. No, there isn't, because I can give you some breaking news this week. There's going to be a new tube strike in November <laughs> uh, because they want some more money. Because <laughs> you know what? She's going to give it to them. There of wasn't course. the sign of a train, though, was there, going past her? No. no. It was a strike. <laughs> yeah. So things aren't moving that quickly, no. No. are they? That's just the thing. Um, but, and, and how can you take her seriously? You can't. Her hair is ridiculous, isn't it? I'm sorry. How can that be? It's unprofessional. It's not great, is it? She looks ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. I don't care what hair she has as long as she does her job properly. Well, she's not doing that. Well, you won't be in that. a seat because you'll be on a P&O cruise, won't you? <laughs> yeah, but but the, I mean, the other, the other problem for this business with the trains is that, you know, today or this week it was announced that the inflation rate's now come back down to well below 2%. I think it's 1.7%. Oh. Um, which is quite a long way away from the, the peak, the pay rises that they gave to the train yeah, drivers. Asleb, give 15, you the money back. Give them 15%. You know, I haven't heard anyone from Aslev no. saying... Do you know, we feel really bad now because you've given us these really, really above um, Imagine inflation Imagine if they did some really rises. good, like gave their pay rise back because of the inflation drop yeah. to the pension. And so we don't need it. Same with the junior doctors. Junior doctors, 22%. That's approximately 10 times or more, 10 and a half times yeah. uh, the rate of inflation. So why do they never mention that? Because yeah. that doesn't, that's not the rhetoric. That's not the, the it's me, me. These unions who control the Labour government they will want to make as much as they can in the next five years, in whatever way. Yeah. What, what, what I thought you said brilliantly earlier was, I've always thought that the Labour Party was the, the party of the working man and woman. It's not. It's no. not. Of course their, it's not. Their nose is in the trough along with their union mates. I think is far worse yeah. than anything we've it ever totally seen. It totally is. Yeah. totally is. Uh, Rebecca, over to you. And the Sherwood Forest scenario. Yeah, so <laughs> Robin Hood, when I say that, you know, what is that, you know? Tights. So, Tights, uh, the, the Disney Fox. For me, Tuck. it's Kevin Costner. It I once Marian. went to a fancy dress party dressed as that. As I, Am Tuck. I allowed to swear on this show? Um, I don't know. Uh, Chuck? I, I didn't. You no, can cut this yes. out. He says yes. So I went dressed as far as I can. The badge said, I'm not Fry Tuck, I'm Try Fuck. Oh. That was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? No. 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 I thought I'd drop that in. <laughs> well, with that image in, in our minds now, that I don't think will ever That's be erased. back for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> I've never quite thought Robin Hood, you know, who stole from the rich to give yeah. to the poor, wasn't very inclusive, wasn't diverse enough. No, or one of the bad guys. One of the oh. bad guys, someone who didn't represent, you know, the, the hard done by majority. Yes. But let's wait for this woke, woke culture has hit again. And uh, Nottingham Building Society have decided to remove, because they used to be on their logo, right. they've rebranded to this like more swirly soft logo. But, um, it's really just to say because he wasn't diverse enough and didn't reflect the diversity of their customers. They're a bank. Banks don't have to have morals. They have to make money and yes. put the money back to people so they can buy houses right. and do things. Stop trying so to be right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they have He's vanished no him now. Isn't that, isn't that the seen by the left as a good thing? To because that's what they're going to do with tax: rob from the rich and give to the poor. Why yeah. is that? That would be well, right. Got, up no, they're doing it the other way now. They're robbing from the poor and giving it to the rich. Well, maybe Rachel rewarded. Williams would be their new logo in a kind of, you know. <laughs> no, she's uh, Richard III, as we, as we said. Ah, yes. Don't mix up the old Hold stories. Hold on a second, we need to check with him. Morgan, do you think she looks <laughs> What do you think, Morgan? Morgan. <laughs> what do you think we should be doing? Yeah, I mean, it seems ludicrous. I think we've got a commercial. Is this is commercial for um, the Nottingham Building Society. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm Robin from the Nottingham, and I'm on a quest to get the best mortgage for everyone. This one's for you, the Browns of Worksop. A mortgage from the Halifax. And I don't just mean our best, that's too easy. But the best available deals to us from over 40 lenders. Jones, go nationwide. And our advice, fee free. Why would we do this when no other building society does? We're the Nottingham, and we put you 
first. Call now or visit the Nottingham.com. He's yeah. annoying, isn't he? he is. <laughs> can I? He's the can kind I? of guy that you find. I don't but, know you do a bit of property work, but I mean, he's the kind of guy that you find. He's an estate agent. He's an estate agent. He's an estate yeah, agent. Definitely an estate I, agent. I was watching that <laughs> yeah. thinking, for all the people who say it's time for you and I to give up, I think people like that give us hope that we should they continue do. for a long time. <laughs> I mean, but, but hang on, can I just get this clear? So the Nottingham Building Society, they want to <laughs> remove the whole property. They have removed any association. Right. Okay. So no, no, because the sign has been changed. And that's gone. So so because that. So because, <laughs> because Robin Hood is white and male, but the fact that he's a criminal was fine for decades. That's OK. <laughs> yeah. that's okay. Yeah, that's right. The other thing okay. that some yeah. people have pointed out, um, which makes the story the most ridiculous story of the week, perhaps, is that he's actually not a real character. Of course. He's made up. Yes. He doesn't <laughs> exist. So it doesn't matter he's whether he's diverse. Is. No. There is Robin no such Hood thing. Robin Hood doesn't exist. I used to... You know, my abiding memory of Robin Hood is Robin Hood services, uh, which I think are off the M1. They rob near the rich to give to the well, they rob for everybody basically yeah. because the prices are yeah. absolutely nice. 19 sky quid high. for a breakfast. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, probably, it probably is. Yeah. But I mean, I was a, we used to go to Scotland as a kid, and we always, for some reason, stopped at the Robin Hood services. And as a child, I just assumed that's where he lived. I thought, well, this wow. must Does be it go where. Has that been rebranded as well? I, didn't just I don't know. I don't that. know. <laughs> I don't know. If, if How looked. do you feel now? About now that? I'm crushed, yes, you know, Robin because they've just taken, taken him out. out of my childhood memory and I won't be able to think about him now, apart from that bloody idiot with the green suit. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, they'll be coming cool. for Santa next. Santa is not diverse enough, you know. They'll be coming for everything yeah. that means anything to anyone. They, they will. And Can I make a serious point, sure. though? Sure, Because I, I have No, a you do know what show this is. Because <laughs> yeah. I have a family member who lives right near Sherwood Forest. Okay. And we were there recently and they had a big Robin Hood festival and the kids loved it. Of course they did. And I just find it so sad that that part of history and culture won't okay. be taught to children. It's where the best centre parks in What about Sherwood Maid Mary? in their lows. Yes. She, yep, yeah, well. Hmm. Hey? Yeah. Maid Marion. Was there anybody at the party dressed as Maid Marion? <laughs> I've no idea. I can't remember. It's not <laughs> your office, no. Your Honour. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got one more to do, and it's mine. Uh, and it's somebody... Well, it's not really from the royal family. It kind of used to be in the royal family. Uh, and it is called Meghan Markle. We haven't talked about her for such a long time. Yeah, she's been no. missing. I've dragged her back from, you know, basically, you know, obscurity. Mm. Obscurity. But Harry, I can tell you, looks a lot happier without her, doesn't he? Uh, we'll talk about some of that coming up later uh, on Playing Door. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. I, I'm Mike Graham, and we are here every Friday night, of course, uh, for your delectation. Um, we've got the final nomination coming from me, and it's a woman that we used to get on all the time because she used to be right at the forefront of news every single mm. day, practically. Mm. But she's kind of disappeared, so I thought, you know, maybe revisit Montecito, mm -hmm. the Montecito Massive. I love that um, idea. <laughs> Montecito <laughs> and, uh, and Meghan Markle, you know, who, of course apparently has been out and about chatting to people and telling them that she's been the most bullied person yeah. in the history of bullying. And, of course, you've got lots of different people also feeding into that sort of matrix. We've just seen uh, Prince Harry on his own, haven't we, when he was out um, in, was it New York he went yep. to? Yeah, yeah. Uh, where he was wandering around looking very happy on his own. Because uh, on his own. Uh, yeah. uh, appearing at the Diana Memorial Awards or something like that. And people were saying, you know, this is the beginning of the end of their marriage. Um, but there's a guy who used to work for both of them, used to work for, used to be a bodyguard for her when she was in uh, Toronto on Suits. And he said, you know, basically it was a very, very difficult job because she was so demanding. Yeah. yeah. And it feeds into all of those Shocking things. That, isn't it? That, yeah, the, the things well, she's that she lost loads and loads of stuff. Isn't she alleged to be not a very nice person yeah. when it comes to the people that she deals well, with? Well, she's very keen staff. on, a, on a, a sort of 5 a.m. email, apparently. She's very yeah. keen on, on sort of, you know, there's a bit of an irony around. her saying that she's bullied when. Um, some I, might say that it's I often got, the case. I got, got slagged off five years ago um, uh, by saying he he will be back in the United Kingdom with his ginger tail between his legs. On his own. I mean that in any <laughs> right, way. And she will be there with two kids. That is never ever going to work. And I and I listen. We've all made mistakes in our lives. I think he's I think he's whipped. I'm not using the first word. And I think that was patently obvious. And I think she saw what what she could achieve. I think she's horrendous. Mm. Oh, this I didn't know who he was. He'd set out to achieve. Of course she knew who he was. So we're not buying this. We're, we're, no one's actually buying. Well, I think she the is, I don't give a toss victim. about it, do you? She's, she's not the most bullied woman in the world. I think there are probably quite. Few people that She's taken us that. for fools in this country. And the great thing about the British public is they won't have her at all. They will not have her. That's why she doesn't come back, Russ. There ain't anybody that'll have very, her. I mean, Candice isn't the only one that's going to make a serious point. Serious point. If you're the victim of domestic abuse, let's say, yeah. and you hear someone like Meghan Markle, who yeah. comes from an absolute life of mm. privilege, yeah. Yeah. saying that she's more bullied than you, yeah. that doesn't make you feel. Mm. I, I, I just think that, you know, she, they tried to quash these rumours of her ha being a bully at yeah. work. 
but in Hollywood, they're speaking openly about it. Right. It seems to be a pattern. Right. It really is. And you know, you look at you look at someone like Camilla, for instance, who had so much hatred years ago, but she stuck with it. She went for the long term, Total and now respect. she's yeah, she's people respect her now. It's really interesting. She was the most hated woman in the world, Camilla Parker Bowles, certainly amongst royalists. And you're right, through graft and through hard work and keeping and you know her head down. I, I I have the greatest respect for Camilla Parker Bowles now. I think she's I think she's done an amazing yeah. job. Yeah, uh, so it's time now to uh, decide who should be the winner. Mm. And, I mean, Labour are playing a pretty strong card here, aren't they? Because uh, you've got Louise Haig, uh, you've got Wes Streeting, you've got Keir Starmer, uh, and you've got Sadiq Khan as well. I mean, it's quite a lot of Labour uh, politicians there, aren't don't they? Don't envy your job, Mike. It's very difficult because don't I don't want to keep job. giving... I mean, last week we actually gave it, I think, to the BBC. Uh, for their homage I think of you have to uh, give it to yourself. the Iranian church leader. What, conquers? I think the world can <laughs> yeah, conquer. Is that a Dave, I mean, I mean honestly, <laughs> a steel conquer. I mean, yeah. It's brilliant. It is. Wait, I mean, is we must stress. Is he a genius? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> well, it's great. Why not? That's made clever. of steel. He's yeah, I mean, he's, he, I mean he's, he's saying it's not true, right? So, I mean, oh, even yeah. the fact that he would even consider doing such a thing would make him a plank. All right, I don't mind. I mean, he'd have a vote. I, 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 <laughs> David J.K. Jenkins, a.k.a. King Conquer. <laughs> it just sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds mad. Well, he might win it just for the name. Just for the name. King <laughs> Conquer, you are Plank of the Week. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you very much to Jeremy, thank you to Candice, thank you to Russell, thank you to Rebecca. Uh, we'll see you all same time next week for more from Plank of the Week.